where you can get onto our website. And thanks to our partnership with Dr. Marison's organization, Values in Action, we are able to continue a relationship with our visitor public by encouraging them to work with our partners in seeing that their resources help the individual further in his or her development. It's an extraordinary uh, asset, if you will, of this organization, and we are extraordinarily thankful for what Neil is bringing to this organization. Dr. Mayors. Well, how do you introduce a man that uh, continues to this day to be the only photographer who has ever been on the cover of Sports Illustrated? And if those of you in this room recall when such a cover was, its title was, and who is that with, with uh, Howard Bingham? And he doesn't let most of us forget about that on occasion. But um, I can just say to all of you, um, in an equal way of my expressing my admiration to Lani for the way she gives to others. Muhammad could never, ever hope for any more sincere, genuine, uh, caring, and uh, just the best friend one could have in Howard. And that friendship, of course, has, has gone beyond 40 years, 42, 43 years. And so you will see in Howard Bingham's gallery, that is indeed a permanent, <coughs> wonderful environment. The opportunity today for us to share with you not only imagery of Howard and Muhammad, because so much of other imagery that you see, both in the center as well as the exterior uh, facade, are images of this extraordinary artist. But you will also be exposed to work he's done all over the globe not pertaining to Muhammad, but just again, showing this man's history of relationships with others. An extraordinary friend of the center, of uh, the Ali's and many others, and um, we are proud to call him our honorary curator of photography, Howard Bingham. The next gentleman is Joe Summers, who is our project manager from Formations Incorporated of Portland, Oregon, the company for which we reached out to after considering firms throughout this country and beyond, to work with us, seeing that we have the kind of design that you're being exposed to today, the quality of its fabrication in terms of exhibitory components, and all the other kinds of creative elements that are part of, of uh, such a unique visitor experience. I introduce to you, Joe Summers. <laughs> Joe Cortina is president of Cortina Productions out of, out of uh, McLean, Virginia. Once again, we consider firms throughout this world to work with us knowing how important media and the interactive components of our presentations were going to be for this 21st century institution. We absolutely selected such a firm that is proving to be the right selection because you will be exposed to, I think, some of the more creative, compelling, emotional imagery in media that any institution is sharing with the public. Joe, welcome. Lastly, I introduce to you the Muhammad Ali Center's Chief Curator and Dr. Susan Schaefer Mahimas. Dr. Schaefer Mahimas, I, I rarely call her her last name because I've known her for years and uh, I call her uh, Susan. And, uh, but I can just call her for your benefit an extraordinary scholar, a person who knew probably what you could stuff in a thimble about Muhammad's career as a boxer uh, before now nearly five years ago when she began to truly become the historian that she now is of Muhammad's life. And she has just been a wonderful, wonderful person to contribute 
to the messaging, to this vision, to the whole spirit of this organization and particularly its visitor experience. She is a gift to the center. Thank you. Susan. So we will have the opportunity to, um, to go at any of us um, now. So I'm going to ask for Marcy May to uh, give you a little bit of housekeeping yeah. information. Thank you. Um, as Mike said, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we have the media divided into two groups, group A and group B, and that is to give you a little more space in the exhibits and a little more time with the spokespeople. We ask that you please stay with your group. Um, group A is going to tour the center first and then do round robin interviews. Group B is going to do round robin interviews first and then tour the center. Both groups have the exact same amount of time to work. I did not grow up with Muhammad. <laughs> I am 15 years younger than him. He, uh, he'd already, he was already, you know, had started his professional career when I met him, I was six. But no, I would have never had imagined something like this. Never. If everyone knows that the champ was for peace during the Vietnam War. In today's times of war in Iraq and other turmoil and violence around the world, can you speak to any specific types of events or discussions that are going to take place at this center with regard to peace? Well, there's a, there's a portion of this center that is absolutely dedicated to conflict resolution. I think everyone here knows that Muhammad is a man of peace. He is an ambassador of peace for the United Nations. And it's been his nature all of his life to resolve conflict, to try to live in peace with other people, to open his arms to other people of other cultures, other religions, other political persuasions. And I think that's what has enabled him to be able to be a world citizen, to be a world humanitarian and an emissary for peace. And to be able to teach that to other people, to inspire them to be the way he is, to look at people the way he looks at people, to look at humanity the way he looks at other people. Um, it's something that this center will actually be um, drawing programming from and is a, is a, a vital component of what this center is about. In addition to his cause towards peace, he's also done a lot to create interfaith understanding about the Muslim faith. Correct. Can you also speak to what the center is going to do with regard to bridging understanding gaps about the Muslim faith? Well, I shouldn't say it, it will be specifically about the Muslim faith. It's about bridging gaps between people of different cultures, different religions, different, as I said, different political ideologies. So it really doesn't matter what, what uh, religion you belong to. There is a component here that speaks to spirituality and how it centers an individual, regardless of what religion you belong to. And it's something that has guided Muhammad his entire life. Do you wish that there would be more widespread support for the center by Louis Billions, or do you expect it would just outreach and go beyond more global terms and just where it's located in the world of Kentucky? You know, I think we could have put this in the middle of the Sahara Desert and it still would have global outreach and it still would have been known. We want this to be a beacon of hope, of, of light to people who are in search of greatness within, who are in search of conflict resolution, who are in search of a better tomorrow, a better world. Muhammad is a global universe, is a global person. This center absolutely is a global institution. Um, we expect its outreach to, to be throughout the world, as Muhammad has gone throughout the world, and to be recognized throughout the world as he is. And the impact on children and future generations, what do you foresee it being? All inspired. <laughs> you know, that's that's the biggest thrill, the biggest joy that I have and Muhammad has about this whole institution is how it will affect children and what it will do for them. Um, that's been his compassion for children, his love is for children, and his hopes and dreams are mostly for children to let them see a brighter tomorrow, to give them that, that inspiration to believe in themselves like he believed in himself when he was 12 years old. I, I mean, if you hear the, the story of, uh, that Mayor Abramson said earlier, Muhammad was always a character. He was always very calm, very cocky. He always thought he could do whatever he wanted to do. And that's important that all children feel that. It's okay. Could you speak to the people who helped make this a reality as well as what went into making this a reality? There are so many people. So many people to thank. Even these guys you see here today doing the work that they're doing, the construction workers, we owe a great debt of gratitude because they've worked overtime and they've countless hours. But there are people that aren't even here today. There, you know, there's a gentleman here, um, Larry Townsend, who is not here, who basically took my hand and guided me through this. He's not here today. He was, he's no promises before the Olympics, Governor Brown, who sent me.